Hello, everybody, and welcome back to An Abundance of Not. Garrett here. That's Brad. Hello. And that's Wade. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Just peachy. It is yeah, going. Well, it it got more peachy in the green room. Green room. Holy crap. Well, you know, we've got to let off a little steam ahead of time so we can uh, is do that this what a you very letting serious off? podcast. Is that what you were letting off in the green room? Yes. Yes. Okay. Steam. Okay. Steam. Sure. You know, yeah. like the video game company. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. How was your weekend? <laughs> That's what we call a change of topic. Politely um, changed topic. Weekend. Weekend was okay. Um, I had a father daughter dance. Uh, it, was, it was a Girl Scout thing, but it was a father daughter dance, which of course they put a hundred people inside of a tight school auditorium with no air ventilation and make them jump around for an hour and a half. It sounds glorious. So that's clearly, you know, there's no issues there at all. They then no. used the heat provided by those people. Yeah, I was sweating <laughs> like a pig after the first dance. It's crazy. Um, Saturday and Sunday were pretty mild, actually. We did some work on our, um, our home improvement stuff, um, ran a few errands. It's, it's my daughter's birthday tomorrow, uh, or today, if you're listening to this on February 12th. And, uh, so we did some errands for that and kind of picked out some stuff and getting everything ready for that. But luckily she's a, a low maintenance kid. When you ask, you have to pry tooth and nail to try to get her to commit to wanting anything so it makes look at it one of two ways it makes it a pain to go find something to buy for her, but also there's not a lot of expectation there either so that's cool really she was like creating a list for like two months for christmas then it was yeah, like for her birthday, birthday she's like nothing. i don't know uh, <laughs> uh so but yeah, uh, not very eventful, although this weekend she wants to go to one of those indoor trampoline places for her birthday is something to do instead of Sky something zone. to get. Yeah, we have one out here called Big Air, which I'm sure is the same thing. Okay, and they're then, awesome. Um, say that again? I said they're awesome. Have you been before? Uh, she had a birthday party she attended at one, at okay. which I observed. I did not. Um, you partook? What are you kidding? I don't think I... Not at the one I'm thinking of. Nah. Uh. Well, you need to. There was yeah. one. There was one. I do. We did, and I twisted my ankle doing it pretty badly. <laughs> yeah. Now you Ouch. remember that one? Yeah. No, but the the memory of you in pain is always a good memory. Oh. This is what I live with, people. You're Jeez. welcome. Jeez. Um, yeah. So she's got some friends that we're actually going to be watching t- tomorrow. So she'll have some friends over for her birthday, and they're probably going to join us at the trampoline place this weekend. We have plans, loose plans to see a movie this weekend. She wants to see Jupiter Rising, if she hasn't already. And uh, there's also a martial arts tournament going on Saturday, which is Valentine's, everybody, don't forget, um, down in San Diego. But I don't think we're going to go to that. It's an hour and a half drive, and with her birthday festivities, um, probably not in the cards. Pretty book solid. Yep. Sounds like it. Yep. A lot of stuff in the works. Wade, how about you? How was your pseudo weekend and or actual weekend? Well, continuing on, not really much happened throughout the weekend. I've been trying to iron out the time schedule for the channel. But on Monday, I earned the classification or certification, sorry, to actually work as a bartender in the state of California. Woohoo! Sweet. I took the serve safe alcohol. Uh, examination and passed first shot and that's <laughs> yeah i see what you did there <laughs> <laughs> now do you get a card or anything like uh, that we'll be getting the certification in the mail in about two weeks so you should so, really examine opportunities outside of where you're working yep so question for you on that um is it just a bunch of rules and regulations that you have to know, or do they actually test you on stuff like how to mix certain drinks? Uh, it's not really certain drinks. It's how to tell if this is a fake ID. And... It's oh, the okay. legalities, not, uh, yeah. the, yep. not the serving itself. Not but the, the mixology. The... Yeah, Correct. How, how to tell if someone's getting to that point where you know, intoxication. You shouldn't serve them another have... martini. What's that? You should not serve them another martini. Yeah, exactly. Where, you know, 
we're gonna have I'm gonna have to stop serving you, man. And it's the whole tactile of it. It's you can't don't use an accusatory phrase like I can't serve you anymore. Can't serve you anymore because you're drunk. You know it's and you have to be like, you know, I want to see you get home safely. You know, use more of an I statement than a you statement. Yeah, because drunk people can't be reasoned with. And if you know someone's drunk and they uh, leave and get in an accident, technically, at least in California, the bar slash restaurant can be liable. That is called dram law, by the way. There you go. And Fun. Yeah, anyone who is actually injured or if a person is killed, the relatives, family, can sue the establishment and the bartender uh, if it is found out the bartender allowed that person to leave intoxicated. Alrighty. So it's actually pretty crazy is that you want to keep someone at your bar if you believe they're intoxicated. Well, what you can try to do, too, is you can uh, – uh, this is purely hypothetical, and maybe this is not correct. Maybe this is something you can't do. Well, I can but tell you. requesting their keys. Oh, yeah. There's a definite times where, like, yeah, uh, give me your keys. And you can do that. Yep. And then you can then call, call a, cab a cab or mm-hmm. whatever and, you know, let them get home that way and let them figure out because – Anyone who says, well, I can't afford a cab, well, you're not going to be able to afford a DUI either. So <laughs> the lesser of two evils is definitely a cab. You can't afford a DUI and you can't afford another car then either. Yeah. So, so public service announcement, be safe out there, everybody. No drinking and driving. I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That happened. It yes, did. it did. <laughs> Moving on. Yes, sir. Is, is that all you have to say, Wade? Pretty much. Okay. Sounds like a pretty productive weekend, week, day. It was only one day, day but I was well, giving you credit there. Roll with it. He's well, had he's had days of training, and he and he uh, found yep. out that there's a position full time that he is going to be moving into. Went through this last one. We might have last week. He's just waiting on the date to start, and well, just waiting on someone else to fill a position. Because the dishwasher, or another dishwasher, already filled my shift, waiting to find someone to fill his shift. Holy hell. Well, if your shift is filled, then you should be able to move on, but... They're not going to put him into my shift until they find a guy to fill his shift. Yeah. Unions, aren't they great? Doesn't matter. I think I'm I'm already... My position has already changed in the system, so I should already be being paid more. (laughs) <laughs> Even though you're nice. not doing the work. Yeah. <laughs> nice. What about you, Brad? Um, Fairly quiet weekend. Uh, we did take a minor road trip down to Indianapolis on Saturday. Um, went out for dinner and stopped in at one of my favorite toy stores, Fry's Electronics. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. That was a load of fun. What'd you buy? Uh, nothing. No, what? that's not true. I'm sorry. That is not true. Oh my goodness. What a um, liar. I bought some clear, well, mine is, they are translucent. They're not transparent. They're translucent covers for uh, our laptops. Okay. So I don't know if you've ever seen those snap-on plastic covers for MacBooks. No, not really. Nope. Okay. So you can tint your MacBook essentially, but it protects it as well. So mine is now gray. Which I suppose it was being aluminum, and my wife's is now purple. It's like a hard plastic that clips over top of the case. Yep. I guess like a pressure snap. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, aluminum actually scratches really well. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the <laughs> softest metals and lowest. Yep. Lowest uh, melting points. So, my my MacBook has a few scratches on it, so I. Decided to try and prevent that from happening further. From continuing. Yes. Fair enough. Take what did key. you What did you look at at Fry's? Oh, <laughs> lots and lots of what's on the shopping parts. list. <laughs> I perceive um, a home theater system soon. 
Yeah, right? yeah, no. Um, the virtual shopping, I spent, I don't know, probably a good seven or eight thousand um, dollars. <laughs> you know, they got good home theaters there. They've got lots of components. I like do-it-yourself stuff when it comes to electronics. So, speaking of, have you ever taken any steps towards your uh, uh, aerial? Well, I'll call it what it is: your firework launch system. No, no, not yet. Sad face. You I have know. big plans for that. <laughs> you were coming up to visit again. <laughs> <laughs> Could be arranged. I know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was the that was the highlight of our weekend, really. Laptop the rest of it cases. was kind of quiet. Sweet. I saw your wife said something about your favorite restaurant reopening a little closer, be after their um, construction mishaps. Yeah, so last last winter uh, we got a fairly severe snowstorm, which is not uncommon for us, but the roof of the restaurant collapsed under the weight of the snow. Ouch. Um, yeah, so that was actually where we went Saturday, uh, but because they hadn't reopened yet, we had to take the drive down to Indianapolis, but now they're reopening fairly soon, I believe. That's good for you. Absolutely. Awesome. Um well, with that, I guess we should jump into some movies. Movie clips, movie clips. We like movie clips. Movies. So, in the box office, uh, not box office, opening this week, we have five movies that I will touch briefly on because I haven't had time with the daughter's birthday tomorrow to really dive into it. Number one is The Kingsman, The Secret Service. This is about the uh, British like spy organization type deal. Uh, surprising to me, it's rated at 77%. I say surprising because we've seen a lot of big movies that we've anticipated come in at pretty crummy, uh, critic ratings. This one's fairly solid. It looks really well done. It's got the cast of, uh, bear with me, Colin Firth, Michael Caine, Mark Hamill. I'll just pause there for a second. And, uh, Samuel Jackson to note a few. Shouldn't this be called like the Queensman? Because yeah, it's a valid point. I'm not sure why it's not called the Queensman. Maybe that has some other sort of connotations in uh, uh, proper England, like not um, that I'm aware of. Uh, like service men that service the Queen. Um, I don't know, but that is Kingsman. Also coming out is Fifty Shades of Grey, the uh, highly anticipated novel come movie. Um, so yeah, that's only got a critic rating of 41% though, which is kind of surprising to me. Um, looking at the names though in it, uh, n no one really, I recognize Jamie Dornan uh, plays Christian Grey. I want to say he's from Mad Men, but I could be wrong. Dakota Johnson plays the lead female, I believe. Uh, and Anastasia whatnot. or something? Uh, what? Anastasia, I think your name is. Yeah, Anastasia Steele. Uh, for those who had any sort of uh, misconceptions, this will be rated R for strong sexual what? content, including dialogue, unusual behavior, and graphic nudity. Just to be aware. I'm shocked. You should be. Number three, a critic rating of 92% is What We Do in the Shadows. Um. This is currently unrated from a critic's perspective. Looks like it has something to do with the undead. Um, so, and I'm not sure if this is going to be, it looks a like drama comedy. Uh, looks like it's got something to do with HBO uh, or creators of the HBO hit series Flight of the Concords. Uh, but the, the synopsis looks pretty weak there. It chronicles the adventures of four vampire roommates trying to get by in a modern world. So oh, okay. that's kind of interesting. It's like being human in the sci-fi channel. Uh, which actually yeah, that's, that's kind of what that is. Or is, is, is that sci-fi or is that like CW or whatever? No, I think it's like, yeah, it, no, it's sci-fi. Sci-fi. Um, so yeah, that's, that's coming out. Number four on the list is the last five years. This is with uh, Anna Kendricks and Jeremy Jordan. Not super familiar with either one of those. This is PG-13. 
and an adaptation of a hit musical, The Last Five Years, is a musical deconstruction of a love affair and a marriage taking place over a five-year period. Uh, Jamie, a young, talented, up-and-coming Jewish novelist, falls in love with Kathy, a shiksa goddess and struggling actress. Their story is told almost entirely through song. All of Kathy's songs begin and end uh, at the begin. At what the heck is it saying? All of Kathy's <laughs> songs begin at the end of their marriage and move backwards in time to the beginning of their love affair. While it looks like Jamie's songs start at the beginning of their affair and end at their marriage. I could see that being confusing. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting here just like, oh, <laughs> um, God. That's strange. Uh, again, so PG-13 on that. That's got a critic rating of 65%. And finally, coming out is The Rewrite. This is with Hugh Grant and Marissa Tomei. Also featuring J.K. Simmons. I think it's Simmons. It could be Simons. Um, if you don't know who he is, he pops up on all kinds of stuff. So you'd recognize him once you see him. Uh, once upon a time, Keith Michaels, played by Hugh Grant, uh, was an award-winning Hollywood screenwriter, but divorce and a string of unsuccessful films have left him with nothing but bad debts and blank pages. So when his agent arranges a job as a guest screenwriting professor at a remote university in upstate New York, a desperate Keith can't say no, initially hoping to give minimal effort to actually teaching so he can focus on his next script, Keith unexpectedly finds himself becoming invested in the students' lives, including Holly, played by Marissa Tomei, uh, a single mom looking to start her own new chapter. The rewrite features an all-star cast, including some of the names I just mentioned. Uh, Again, that is 65% also and currently has no... uh, Critic, not critic, but uh, viewership rating. There, I got that out of the way. In wow. the box office, number one, uh, kind of a surprise to me, is the SpongeBob movie at fifty five point four million. <laughs> uh, evidently, evidently, there was nothing else good to watch. Well, apparently, uh, American Sniper number two, which has been out for a good couple of weeks now, pulled in another twenty three point three million. Jupiter Rising looks like it fell in critic rating down to 23%, pulled in 18.4 million. And Seventh Son, which is the um, fantasy Jeff Bridges movies, looks like it fell to 10% critic rating, pulling in 7.2 million. Now, his movies have not been doing great lately. I mean, the last few he did, he did RIPD, which was horrible from the critics' perspective. This. Um, did you watch RAPD? I've caught, I haven't watched it from the start to finish. I've watched a bulk of it. Um, and I was hoping it was going to be more men in black, less what it was. Sure. Uh, from what I could tell the CG was sloppy uh, and not sloppy, but I don't know. Some of the character creations from a CG standpoint, just made you wonder like why why the movie was but, campy but it was fun yeah and i guess that was kind of the point but the critics didn't didn't necessarily agree well i don't care i know you don't <laughs> i know i very okay. rarely care what the critics think. i don't this care is, that you don't true. care that is a true well, fine um but yeah we might be going to see jupiter rising this weekend uh grace is looking forward my daughter's looking forward to the um visual elements so hopefully we'll have some first-hand experience on that i know we haven't talked about a movie firsthand over here in a while uh it's been a good probably two months so um hopefully we can get back onto a track there and be able to give you our listeners uh, a little more insight Woo-hoo. with that news In mobile news this week, JetBlue has announced that they are going to be replacing all of their in-flight purchasing equipment. So, um, you know, when you order a premium drink and they ask that you pay for it, they have to accept that payment somehow. On the smaller regional jets, uh, a lot of times they're cash only, but on the big jets, 
they take credit cards. So what JetBlue has decided to do is replace all of their um, e-commerce equipment with iPad minis equipped with credit card readers, but not just plain credit card readers. They are also NFC, near field communications equipped, so that they will be able to accept Apple Pay. So that now brings the number of places you can use Apple Pay to three <laughs> <laughs> behind Walgreens and Trader Joe's. <clears throat> that's... Um, no, that's not quite true. Uh, you can use it in a fairly decent number of places. But it's exciting for me to see airlines start to adopt um, the technology because it's not just Apple customers that benefit. Google attempted to have a NFC wallet system before, but um, never really took off. So hopefully Apple can, you know really start to punch this through in in the marketplace and you know apple use or sorry android users will get the benefit from it as well cool so JetBlue looking to is this has this rolled out or is this just a proposal um this is no it says passengers on select JetBlue flights will be able to Awesome. This is this is rolling out. Very cool. But Over not across 3, the hundred devices have been issued. Wow. Yep. That's a lot of iPads. That's a yeah. That that'll be nice for uh, Apple's quarter two uh, earnings. Yeah. Well, it can't hurt. That's for sure. Yep. Uh, piggybacking on smartphone technologies and mostly at. Apple again. Smartphone thefts have plummeted in three major cities thanks to the kill switch feature. Uh, the decline in three major cities after the manufacturers have uh, in, uh, intim, implemented, implemented <laughs> the kill switch. Uh, the kill switch, for those who don't know, is a remote option to turn off all functionality to a device. Uh, to be used when the device is stolen or lost so that no personal data uh, falls into the wrong hands, so to speak. So the three major cities that we're talking about is San Francisco, New York, and London. Um, in this case, we're talking about iPhone stolen um, within roughly uh, a year-to-year -year comparison. They didn't give exact numbers, but San Francisco is reporting a 40% decrease in iPhone thefts uh, compared to prior to having the kill switch feature. New York is saying 25% uh, correlating the same deal. And London says roughly half or 50% uh, decrease in phone thefts. Uh, all the info was provided from officials within the respective cities. Uh, the London mayor... Boris Johnson, San Francisco District Attorney George Gascon, or Gascon, and New York State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman were among numerous officials uh, raging for new laws mandating the kill switch functionality. In California, where it appears no law currently exists, uh, cell phone thefts have dropped uh, statewide as a result of the kill switch function. So this is a function that just, like, bricks the phone. Right? Totally. It locks it well, up. It makes it... Yeah. It doesn't brick it. It locks it. Um, in Apple's case, because I'm familiar with that one, it locks it to your Apple ID. So uh, you can go in through... Apple has a remote login facility. Um, not for them, for you. You sign up for it, and it's accessed by you. Um, in Apple's case, it's called Find My iPhone. So I can log in to their website and put in my Apple ID and password and track where my phone is, and I can remotely send the command that essentially bricks the phone, um, making it unusable unless it is retrieved by me, and I then re-authenticate it to my Apple ID again. Ah. It's a really cool... It's really cool, and, and the reason why they're seeing thefts drop in other places is... 
this doesn't actually require legislation to enable. You know, Apple isn't making a London and New York specific version of the phone. Nope. So it just needed somewhere to require it. And now that they're putting it in, everybody gets the benefit from it. Yep, agreed. So, and where this is really, really paying off is it's it's cutting out the black and gray market for these devices. I mean, I can steal it from you, but most thefts, especially of these high-end devices, aren't for people to use, they're to sell. Sure. Right? I don't want your phone, I want the money that your phone is worth. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. Exactly. So... You know, if I steal your phone and all I've stolen is a brick, well, then there's no market for a brick. Yeah. So what's the point in stealing it? I'll steal your money. radio instead. I don't make a lot of money selling paperweights. Exactly. That's it. Well, wait. I guess continuing on, if you're looking for something to watch on your in-flights, uh, Netflix, in co- combination with Nintendo... Uh, have beginning to work on a live action Legend of Zelda series. Interesting. Yeah. Alrighty. This is uh, one of Nintendo's longest running franchises, spanning some 20 and upward games since its in- first game initial released. And even though this is still speculation, um, the series is reporting or not reporting looking for a writer and even though Nintendo is not commenting or no Netflix is not commenting and Nintendo is saying they do not comment on speculation so this isn't confirmed yet confirmed but it was records have shown that Nintendo and Netflix have been talking quite okay. heavily uh, there's been a bit of other Netflix news as well. Apparently, their House of Cards series, the next season, leaked uh, or was released ahead of schedule from their pre-planned uh, premiere. And additionally, the apparently Marvel, I believe it's Marvel, uh, and Netflix have teamed up for either, a, I believe, a Daredevil series. Uh, so that has received a trailer. Uh, I believe on Netflix. And speaking of Marvel, Sony is allowing Marvel slash Disney to use the rights for Spider-Man. Or they're allowing them to use Spider-Man. Yeah, I wonder to what case, though, because the next Avengers movie is done done. and is (laughs) going to be out in theaters here in a couple months. So I wonder if they'll maybe do like a cameo thing at the end of the credits, you know, where they maybe try to tie Spidey into the fold. But we'll see how that goes. Wow. There was a lot there. There was a lot there. there. Was, we started with Netflix stuff and we kind of so jumped ship. Netflix is doing a bunch of stuff. And, and I know we've covered this in previous weeks, but uh, I think the other segments of the entertainment industry really need to be on guard because Netflix is coming to get you. This is really stepping and, on their toes, isn't it? Well, yeah. And guess who I'm cheering on? Yeah. The other um, dog. So... What do you guys think is the market for a Zelda live action series? Well, I think Nintendo's fishing hard. As we've talked about before, they're they're not doing great. Um the market that's a tough one. I would have to say that it almost has to be geared toward people like us who have grown up with Zelda, not people now who might be playing uh you know, and I say people, I mean a younger generation who might be playing something on the Wii or the 3DS or something. I mean, I remember having the Zelda game on NES and I had a big old graph paper map that my mom created for me to help me navigate the world of Zelda. And then with Super Nintendo, you had uh, one or two games and N64, you had what? The, the Ocarina mas- of Time. And Ocarina the- of Time and what, Mask of Something. Um, have a mask. Majora's Mask. Majora's yeah, mask. I played those a lot. Um, uh, you know, but we're the people that played and experienced those games. It's going to be it's feel kind of weird because you're giving somewhat of a mute character. I mean, he has been other than hey ah, you know, yeah. <laughs> throughout most of the gaming franchise to actually 
hear him talk. Now, I know there was a cartoon version of him where he, you know, was speaking, but most of us probably grew up with him and his sword swings. Yeah, that's about it. And so Netflix, if you're looking for uh, talent to do the voiceover, give us a call. Yeah, apparently. Because Wade has this nailed. Wade has it down pat. Uh, I'll, um, take, I'll take payment in rupees. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to confess, I have not ever played Zelda in any way, shape, or form on any version of Nintendo. Would you guys watch a Zelda series? I would give it a try. I'd give it a chance, yeah. But at the same time, I feel that with my age and my tastes now, that it probably wouldn't appeal to me very much. Um, you know, the fan the fantasy world, the fairies, the all the kind of stuff that, that Zelda is was all fine and good when I was ten. Well they keep on you they know? went from now you, now you like fantasy worlds and dragons well, and Game of Thrones. Well keep well, actually because yeah, there's language and adult content and language <laughs> and adult scenery and language and <laughs> violence well, and they go actually ahead, did go on to saying that it would be more of a Game of Thrones for family, which is like something I don't think I'd how ever you, hear myself saying. How do you have a Game of Thrones for family? It's kind of not. Yeah. Um no. There's lots of families in Game of Thrones. What are you talking about? There's lots of families. No, some nudity. of them have no heads. <laughs> no nudity. No. Okay. How? <laughs> so how is this Game of Thrones? Um. Okay. So. So I'm wondering if uh, obviously there we have the desperation of Nintendo on one hand, but I wonder if they're also trying to leapfrog us. Um. Uh, I don't know the content owners off the top of my head, but the the group that owns the Ninja Turtles. Okay. God, that was uh, big. It was, it was, Mattel was the toy brand, I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who holds it for entertainment. Anyway, I know the, that I know was big New when Line I was Cinema a kid. Did the first three movies, but I don't know if New Line <laughs> Cinema, Cinema is still a thing. That was big when I was a kid. Yeah, and it's making a comeback. You know, um, so I'm wondering if they're trying to do a, the similar kind of thing with Zelda and make it appeal to a new generation. Well, but it being live action, I see that being hard. Why? Well, for for our kids, for your and my kids, this is just another cartoon character that they've never seen until episode one that they can build a relationship with fresh. It's you and I, or actually it's you and Wade, that come to this with a baggage. That's right? true. Your kid, my kids, have no baggage associated with Zelda. They get to start over completely fresh. That's true. I mean, that's that's a valid statement, and I have to say that <laughs> One of my daughter's favorite shows is the new Flash series that's been on uh, uh, KTLA for us, she... the CW. I mean, that's that's what she wants to watch. Between that and Arrow, those are our top two shows here at the house that she really enjoys. And those aren't necessarily childish. They are live action. She had no interaction with and knowledge of the Flash or the Green Arrow prior to the TV shows. I suppose it could be that. I just, uh, yeah, maybe I'm bringing too much baggage to it or what. I'm just not sure how a live action with what the games have been that I've experienced will will play well. This, Yeah, and this is what you said, definitely a very, what, long cast for a fishing attempt? Sure. Because, well, we've seen as these movies are going on, both Marvel and DC, Marvel more in lead with what they're going on is that Nintendo's going, okay, maybe we can get a shot in this. Let's see how well a a video game TV series goes. Because apparently the comic TV series and movies are doing pretty well. Yeah. Well, and it's not unprecedented. I mean, Sega licensed Sonic for TV. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, it was cartoon. It wasn't live action. I'm not sure how you do a live action Sonic, oh. but 
Well, but then you had the Resident Evil movies that were all based on, I mean, loosely based on the games. Sure. Um, so it's not unprecedented. Yeah, so. it's never been, it's not that it's never been done for sure. Well, it's, and most of us have sucked, but I guess there are <laughs> some good video game movies, but. Silent Hill. Yeah. Um, so Halo? Oh wait, they still haven't made that one. Yes, they have. Well, they made the one. Wasn't it like Forward Unto Dawn? Yeah, wasn't that? we've talked about it. Eh, it wasn't really a movie. It was a well, mini I suppose series. it was a made-for-TV. It's it's on Netflix as a movie. Oh, is it really? They probably yes. just spliced it all together and went here. Yeah, that's that's what it was because well, it was. A I think it was mini-series. designed to be all together because when you watch it, it's seamless, mm. and it was I then agree. broken up for the release methodology. All right. Anyway, so, I mean, yes. I'm sitting here trying to think of like any other movie franchises or not movie video game franchises that could be used. Well, the the trick to the the video game gone movie, and I know we're going on a huge rant here. We started with a Tangent. basic Netflix, but whatever. Um, the video game thing is you already have a predetermined story with the game, so either the movie has to then replicate that essentially exact story to give the fans what they're expecting or use the title and the characters and have a very, very loose correlation. Um, We saw the loose correlation with the Dragon Ball movie that came out Uh some years ago, and it was a steaming pile of garbage compared to what the anime was and what people were expecting it to be. Um, with the comic books, you have so many different renditions and reboots and whatever that the the movie creators can go and have so much source material to hybrid it as opposed to an already predetermined story. And that's actually a really strong, or not strong, but a really teeter-totter kind of stuff that they're working on with the World of Warcraft movie. Hmm? There is so much lore bat in that series and I know this is major tangent, but you know where where do you go? Either you make it accessible for people and annoy the WoW fans, or you make it, you know, a fan to the, movie. Yeah, fans to the game. What you could then... do with something like that, because there is so much lore, is instead of doing a movie based on what the game has given you, you do a prequel of how you got to. So that if you were to start Warcraft tomorrow, it picks up where the movie left off, so to speak, as a new Warcraft player. Hmm. Um, as an option. So, could be. World of Warcraft screenwriters, contact Garrett for tips. <laughs> <Shit>. <clears throat> Just one man's humble opinion. Yeah, if I said the he, he, the would, he would have no idea who. Oh, no. I would have to... Uh, I'd have to get my entourage together to... I'd have to... This like, Where's that book of wow? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so tone. bringing bringing this back, <laughs> but, back to reality, please. Back, yes, back back down. Um, but while we're on the subject of uh, entertainment, America's most hated company, Comcast. Oh, Comcast. Yeah, the other Comcast. One. Yes. <laughs> they won an award last year. We covered that one. We did. Um, yep, that was so, the most. It is so bad. Go on. How bad is it? How bad um, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it sets you up and everything. It it is so bad. Uh, a, a family in the Philadelphia area, which is one of Comcast's service areas, requested Comcast installation. After six weeks of broken appointments and getting no joy from the company, they wrote to the newspaper to tell them about this. Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happens that the uh, reporter that they got, the columnist that they got, is friends with Comcast CEO... Let me find his name. I thought I had it. Sorry about that. Yep, I know. I guess I didn't have it. Well, anyway. uh, Friends with the CEO's mother. Nice. 
So, and if she... you actually want Comcast to do anything for you, you have to tell on them. Better to call the CEO's mommy. mother. You have to, and she grabbed her son, dragged him <laughs> by to the their ear. house by the yes. ear, and got he... the switch. <laughs> You oh, know, no. this is absurd. So my question <laughs> is, how did we know this? Did the same writer uh, take these people's stories and write that he went and told mommy also? Like, I guess I'm sure. curious as to how the, how the article came to be now. Well, the link will be in the show notes. Uh, <laughs> have to take a look the I mean, plot thickens i thought that's why you were here but apparently not yeah no the uh the columnist wrote about it and said that he told on them <laughs> <laughs> that's almost oh god what is it divine justice what less is that? than a day the problem was solved <laughs> <laughs> i figured the ceo would just write a check to his mom and tell her to shut up <laughs> <laughs> Go buy that Jaguar you wanted. That's right. Here, Mom, I got yeah. you a new car. Can you just not talk? Thanks. You know, this is one of those things that I understand things happen and, you know, appointments don't always work out. But seriously. Six weeks. This is one of the, this is one of the biggest service companies, internet service, TV service, biggest media companies in the country. You would think they would know how to turn a switch on. Yeah. Or that at least is, have okay. somebody get in contact with these people instead of just cold turkey. Someone you know, put somewhat, something in someone's calendar that says they need to be at this time at this place. Yeah, this isn't rocket science, guys. Nope, it's not. God, I could, you know? I could be a better uh, coordinator than whoever it is. The, the title is executive assistant. Appointment Either way. coordinator. I've heard it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell yeah, on them. you know, okay. just another another dent in Comcast's rotten, rusty armor. I was going to say on, in guys. their in their stellar public persona perception. And this is this is the company that's whining to the FCC that don't change the rules. We won't know what to do. <laughs> Apparently, you don't know what to do, even if the With rules the are still the same. Exactly. Idiots. Uh, well, from a company who can't evolve to one that is paving the way, SpaceX, our good Ooh, friends. Nice. And, uh, you know, our buddy Elon. Not that I had lunch yeah, with him yesterday or do anything. Not know him, um, actually. <laughs> SpaceX has launched their Falcon 9 rocket, which is carrying the Discover satellite. Uh, obviously, it's been no secret there have been some complications in previous attempts, um, but the Discover Space Weather Satellite uh, was launched today from Cape Canaveral, beginning its a million-mile journey to monitor geomagnetic storms. Now, for all of it, us, you know, who... It's seriously monitoring space weather. It's monitoring space weather, literally monitoring solar winds. That's awesome. Um, what are solar winds, you ask? I'm glad you asked. What are solar question. winds? <laughs> um, solar winds are essentially particles from the sun that are blasted out from the sun in all directions, which is what causes the aurora borealis because they interact with the Earth's magnetic sphere. Um, and the one in the southern hemisphere. Oh, what? And the one in the southern yes, hemisphere. because we have magnetic poles. Yes. Yes. You <laughs> poles. You reference the aurora borealis. That's I don't know the what the one hemisphere. in the south is called. The aurora australis. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a computer um, engineer and a geologist. It's an astronomer, but it's okay. Geologist researches and rocks. An astronomer. <laughs> Wade only had one rolling beard on, but apparently. Yep. Um, so a little bit of info on the rocket. It only takes one minute and 13 seconds for the Falcon 9 to reach supersonic speeds, which is kind of cool. That's actually kind of slow. 
And I was kind of thinking more. I expected more. it to be quicker than that. Yeah, I kind of did too, actually. Who do you know? It's running on all electricity. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome Simpsons episode. Anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm regaining my composure here for a second. Okay. Um, so the launch was originally scheduled on February 8th, but it was postponed due to a radar tracking system failure. It was then scheduled for February 10th, but was scrubbed due to, quote, upper level winds. I'm guessing that means upper in atmosphere, not upper yes. in speeds. Um, so it was upper planned to go off today. Um, we have talked previously about SpaceX's attempt at um, reusable rockets and having a booster land after it detaches from the main system. Uh, and they tested that not long ago, but it had some catastrophic failure. They opted out of attempting that again this time, stating that the drone ship that's designed to uh, be the landing platform uh, is designed to handle everything but extreme weather. And they're claiming such weather is currently happening in the Atlantic, citing 30 foot waves that are crashing over wow. the decks of ships. Um, I, w- I thought they were going to say it's still broken from their last it's attempt. Still, still broken. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the Discover satellite is, like again, designed to uh, give us an advanced warning on geomagnetic storms, uh, those storms specifically being solar winds. Solar wind spikes have the potential to disrupt nearly every public infrastructure system, including power grids, telecommunications, aviation, and GPS. So kind of a big thing in today's world. Yes, it is. Uh, the Discover satellite mm-hmm. hopefully will give the potential mm-hmm. of providing a 50 to 60, 60 minute warning before a surge of particles reach Earth and will also be able to assist in impact locations. Cool. So we are protecting the Earth from space. I like technology. Yay. Isn't it fun? I did see follow-up articles that um, the Falcon 9 did successfully release the Discover satellite and that the Discover satellite's uh, solar arrays did open without complication and all systems look good so far. This rocket did launch today, Wednesday, uh, February 11th. So, um, but all things are going well up to now. So in a year, we'll have an update of solar wind patterns. Yeah, I'm not sure when it's exactly expected to hit its uh, final destination to be able to accurately monitor. Uh, That part wasn't really explained. I tried to do more research on the satellite, but I had limited time. Oh. Oh. Sad face. (laughs) Well, continuing on for more entertainment, Bethesda, the popular video developer responsible for Skyrim, and Fallout 3 and Brick, but we Brink, sorry, we try not to remember that one, because that one was terrible, uh, announced that they will do, be having their own E3 press conference on June 14th, which is well, several months away. This led to a slew of internet ac- internet activity when people were wanting them to announce Fallout 4. And when I was... Sorry? Yeah. You know, go ahead. I'll let you finish first. Comments of how much people wanted Fallout 4, and and yet I couldn't help thinking, we speak about that we want original IPs, but yet then when a well-known game developer does this we go screaming for a sequel an, another sequel well and the one that came to my mind and where i was going to go was valve with half-life 3 oh yeah i mean we've only been waiting is it 15 years now <laughs> the fact that people are still sitting there waiting <laughs> um <laughs> A little concerning. There was a picture. Little, little inside information, guys. It's not happening. Yeah. There was like a picture of Gabe Newell holding knives, and like on the computer in the back screen. It was like Half Life Three, and it's like, oh look, circles like 
Someone could have edited that, you moron. Yeah, they're trolling. Yeah. <laughs> they're trolling their own users. Yeah. And if not, people are just photoshopping the Half-Life That's 3 the logo same. in. It's not even that. It's like whatever. Half-Life, oh, look, number three. <laughs> yep. That's not hard to do. Yeah, no, it's yeah. not. Some high school student with knowledge of Photoshop, which they do teach, by the way, could do that. Okay, so we were talking about Bethesda, though. Yep. So, yes, well, sorry. People been... So, go ahead. So they're, so it's original IP, and now everybody's upset because it's original IP. Well, no, people are every all the time are wanting new and original content, but then right. when a studio says they're going to hold, what, their first E3 conference ever? Yep. Everyone immediately jumps to, oh, sweet. The sequel to Half Life Three is coming, or another right. Sky or an, uh, Elder Scroll. It's like, come on, guys! So everyone talks about, I want new content, but new please give ideas, me, but g- give, give me, me the give same. me a repeat, give me another post-apocalyptic <clears throat> setting. <laughs> so, well, it just... so I guess we'll have to wait until E three to find out. Yep, uh, they are actually offering a. Uh, Reserve seats. I said, you know, keep in, keep in mind. And see if you can register and save yourself a seat for, you know, their E three press conference in Hollywood this June. Can you get into that? Um, I don't think so. I think we'd have to somehow finagle our way in using some of our affiliates. Should look into it. Yeah, that'd be crazy to go. That to. would be awesome. Should look into it. Mm-hmm. Okay, Brad. This week in NSA news. Ooh. Forgot about them. Um, yeah, we forgot about them. They no, they're still about there. You. Always <clears throat> listen. They're, Always they're watching. still watching. <laughs> All your data are belong to them. Um, are belong to? Nice. Yes. No, that's yes. actually another gaming reference. Is I got it? That one. Thank yeah. you, Wade. Thank you, Wade. All your bases so, are belong to us. Yes. What is that for? All right, so. Oh God, it's an old, old game. A StarCraft 1? No, older. Way older. Okay, whatever. I'll have to, f- I'll have to look that up. God. Moving on. All right. NSA. Interns. Ho. Um, <laughs> NSA. So, a federal judge in the Northern District of California has ruled that he can't rule in a case accusing the NSA of spying. Uh, this case brought, uh, it's Jewel, J-E-W-E-L, versus the NSA, which the, our good friends at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, uh, were joining in on to challenge the NSA's practice of, essentially, the dragnet surveillance. That was the case. However, the judge's decision was, seeing as the NSA programs that they are challenging are classified any procedure going forward with the case may lead to possible disclosure of state secrets therefore he cannot rule on the case and dismissed it so too long didn't read the program is top secret therefore i can't tell you whether it's right or wrong nice wow Mm, yeah so our interns are back, and the phrase, all your base are belong to us, comes from a 1991 opening cutscene from a game called Zero Wing, which was a go. popular, which then became a popular internet meme, or meme whatever the hell they're called. Meme. Sure. Yes. So there so, you go. Ha. Zero Wing. Clearly a Japanese game with poorly... Um, effort put into translation that's what we call english. but that's what made it awesome english that's what we call english yes yes if you're so, if you're asian and you're offended by that good well that was uncalled for <laughs> wow <laughs> anyway yeah so back to the nsa back to nsa so yeah this was the longest outstanding uh, case that the EFF had open to challenge this. Hopefully, this is not a precedent that will be followed by future judges. 
Um, this is very disturbing that, you know, a constitutional level case is brought on violations of, of you know, core rights. And the judge says, yeah, I can't deal with it. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, and what do you do? Could you even go to the Supreme Court? They're just going to do the same thing, potentially. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, is there a fix for this? Well, it's I, f- I believe it sets a dangerous precedent because that means that the government is completely untouchable. Yeah, exactly. If they're doing something wrong that they don't want to deal with, all they have to do is say it's secret. Yeah, sorry, that's classified. Yep, if, the, if this judge is correct based on today's ruling, then, you know, they could make taxes 75% and say, well, you know, it's national security and we're making the entire code classified, deal with it data redacted yeah (laughs) you know this is horrible it's pretty scary especially when you use another analogy like that that you know you always see movies and you got a government agent with his badge that says this is my get away with anything badge and sadly it's becoming more and more true as we're seeing in the media they're they're getting way too much overreach and it yeah, this is this is a very sad precedent, and I hope it gets overturned, and I hope future judges do not follow suit on this. Yep. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> awkward <laughs> silence. Awesome. No, I don't think that was awkward silence. I believe that was does. somber silence. Somber, awkward silence. Yep. I, I, I um, to probably poorly quote... Uh, Star Wars, you know, this is how democracy dies to the sound of applause. Thunderous applause. Thunderous applause. Was that Star Trek or was that Star Star Wars? Wars. Star Uh, Wars. Star Wars episode two? Episode three. Queen Amidala. Uh, When Palpatine takes control of the Senate. Takes control and creates the Empire. I think that may have been in two with the Clone Wars. I don't know. I think you may be correct. I'm not that big of a fan. What order was executed? General Order 66. <laughs> Is that true? I don't know. I was just seeing. <laughs> Interns. <laughs> Interns. Uh, it was the extermination of the Jedi. Star Wars executed. This is how liberty dies with thunderous there you go, 66. order 66. Wikipedia. Not that I would know that. Wuka. Wikipedia. Order 66, also known as Clone Protocol 66, was one of the series contingency orders uh, that the clone troopers of the Grand Army of the Republic were trained to obey without hesitation. The order branded members of the Jedi Order as traitors to the Republic and called for their immediate execution without question or hesitation. Brad Portwood... You are correct. (laughs) Thank you. What do I win? In order 66. You win a snazzy new Amazon $10 gift card. Woohoo! That has been used uh, to the order of (laughs) (laughs) $9.99. I believe that that will do it for this week. (laughs) I had to pay to ship it there and that cost (laughs) $9.99. So you will get a one cent Amazon gift card. Thank you for playing. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you. And with that, um, we're just about done, which I'm actually pretty impressed by with our rants and our ramblings. Keeping it it was good. Quick and quiet. No. It was good. Really. It was good. And with that, guys, <laughs> we thank you for listening as always. Let us know uh, what you think about this episode and our others on Facebook and through Twitter. We are making some changes in how we operate those to hopefully be Uh, a little bit more interactive so uh, hopefully we'll see you there thanks for coming keep on gaming that's a wrap